Hey guys, you're listening to episode 284 of The Modern Acre. This week we talk to Peter Martin and Matt Powell of Pinion. Pinion is the nation's leading food and agriculture consulting and accounting firm. With roots dating back to 1932, the firm has expanded upon traditional accounting services to deliver increased value and growth for clients through comprehensive policy to plate strategies and specialized advisory in the areas of sustainability, government affairs, farm programs, land management, financial management, secession planning, and business strategy. You're listening to the Modern Acre Podcast. Every week, you'll hear from the entrepreneurs, innovators, and leaders that are changing the food and agricultural industry on and off the farm. Your hosts are Tim and Tyler Nuss. They are brothers, fifth-generation farmers, and entrepreneurs who have scaled tech startups, developed international supply chains, and build brands. The Modern Acre is ag built different. Thanks for tuning in this week to the Modern Acre podcast. We've got another great episode for you guys today. Really learning every week from the leaders in food and agriculture and what is happening within food and agriculture today, what innovations are happening in technology and in sustainability. This is the podcast if you're interested in that. So Tim, I'm super excited to jump into Pinion because we've been using Pinion on our farm for the past few years. And in fact, we got involved more in the family farm around the time we started this podcast. And one of the first things we looked at was farm finances. So you've been pivotal in that process, in that evolution, Tim, and then now you're you're full time. I don't know whether to call you COO or CFO, but there's definitely a piece of CFO in your current work. Talk to us about how you have leveraged Pinion and, and what that evolution has looked like from a farm finance perspective. Yeah, it's exciting to finally have Pinion on the podcast. We've really grown the relationship year over year. It's really exciting to see the products and services they're offering on top of the the accounting backbone of the company. So we originally got connected with Pinion for the accounting side. We needed a new CPA and got connected with Pinion through that need for the business. We had a really good relationship with the CPA that we started with. And over the years, we've added in Pinion IO, which is their integrated office, which is kind of a remote bookkeeping functionality, which is really cool that we're able to remotely up- upload every expense, every invoice, every statement, and manage that remotely. So we're paying bills and coding expenses all through their backend platform. So we have a team of people that we deal with, folks out in Tennessee, down in Mississippi, in Iowa. So pretty fragmented remote back office, which is pretty unique, I think, for a lot of farms. When people come out to our farm, they're like, oh, where's where's the office? And we don't really have one. So we've been able to leverage a technology like Pinion to really foster the back end for, for the company. They also have some other service areas. Um, we use them for payroll processing, for HR, uh, to name a few. So every year it feels like we layer on another Pinion service and it's been a really good fit for our farm. Totally. I think it's just been cool for 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 us for when, when we got into the business, we're like, we, we got to understand the financials better. We got to understand the financials better, right? And every year, it's gotten better in terms of our understanding of what is happening on even a, a crop by crop and a field by field basis, which is so important as a farmer to be able to understand those numbers, to understand what crops are performing and what crops aren't and what expenses we should focus on and what are ballooning and what are, are going down, right? Like being able to understand that is so important and and leveraging Pinion and having that expense by expense tracking and traceability has, has been super important for us. We, we talked about it a little bit on our podcast with Ariel, the business of, of farming, right? Of ha- how critical this is and each lever across the farm operation is really critical to the success of a, far, of, of a farm's profitability. So we got to see the comprehensive nature of Pinion in this episode, talking to both of these guys. We think you'll really get a lot of value in it. We're going to drop you into the p- conversation with them sharing what's top of mind. I, I think for me, the, the top of mind is is the need for... U.S. farmers and ranchers to really focus in on their their farm office and the the innovation and the improvements that need to take place in in the next coming months and, and years. It's just we've we've operated a long time in the U.S. by in many cases making as minimal of an investment in terms of time and resources towards a farm office, and I think for a long time a, a lot of growers were able to get away with that. 
But I think we're starting to see a real transformation where those offices are becoming the hub of so much of what occurs on that farm, so much of where all of the, the data from the, across the farm comes together, so much of the, the sort of the source of truth that people are looking for to understand what exactly transpired and what did it really cost to get that done. And as, as, as farm tech continues to evolve and there's a bigger and better play for, for all of these systems to talk to each other and have a great deal of interoperability, again, that farm office, the investment that needs to be made there becomes increasingly important. So as, as a firm and as, as an individual, one of my big pushes, the thing I've been talking about on the sort of speaking circuit, if you will, over the last year or so, has really been the need to start talking about resource allocation towards farm offices and working on how can you really use your farm office as a competitive advantage going forward. Matt, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think top of mind for me is I, I'm seeing just in life in general, it feels like it's harder to get uh, whatever it is, good plumbers, a- any good good services, good people, good employees. I don't know whether it's a post-COVID thing or what, but uh, overlaying with what Peter said, I think it's it's even harder for farmers in regional areas where there's also the added pressure of brain drain to the cities. And so we're, we're just really passionate about providing good back office services at scale with maximum automation so that we can get farmers focusing on what they should be focusing on, which is running a great business, having information at the fingertips, financial information, and um, you know solving the bigger problems in the business, not resourcing. Totally. No, I think I think it's a it's a topic we're really passionate about um, as we've kind of been going the evolu- going through the evolution on our, on our farm, trying to optimize you know the the farm office. Um, it's something that does get overlooked, and we see it throughout you know the industry and the space is typically farmers really have limited resources. And unless you have, you know, part-time support or a really good team, it's, it really is hard to handle that. And that's really like the the last piece to be handled because you have to farm your crops, right? So um, we're really passionate about this as well. I'm excited to dig into kind of how you guys are approaching this. Um, but let's, let's take a step back and learn a little bit more about each of you. Uh, maybe Peter, you can start, tell us a little bit more about yourself and kind of your journey and what ultimately got you uh, involved in agriculture. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had the, the really good fortune early in my, my career. I was working at a, a national bank and knew absolutely nothing about agriculture. But I got introduced to a, a borrower of the bank who uh, was a cattle feeder out in eastern Colorado. And these people were very, very gracious and, and accepted the fact that I knew nothing about ag and, and really taught me a lot. And, and, and not only taught me about their business, but really taught me about more of a rural way of life and, and just kind of agriculture in, in general. And, and I think I fell in love with ag for, for sort of two reasons. Uh, first, just the, the idea of working in the food, fuel and, and fiber industry. I mean, this is this is critical to, to us as a country and, and of course to, to us as, 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 a, as a world. But second was the, 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 the people that we got to, we get to interact with, the, the people that I started with as a young lender, the, the cattle feeder I was talking about, just how genuine and, and caring and honest, I mean, that, that's what we interact with on a day-to-day basis with our customer base in agriculture. And I love that. Uh, there's lots of other industries I've worked with in the past where you, you can't say that same thing. So even though I didn't grow up on a farm, this is not where I came from. I am sure happy that this is where my career has has ended up. My background, so going way back, I got a computer science and engineering, electronic engineering degree. So my, my I'm very much coming from the tech world. So I worked in a lot of different businesses, um, mainly in mobile tech. So I worked at uh, Nokia in in a research role there. I got into the startup world and uh, eventually connected with my co-founder at a business called AgWorld. So we started AgWorld, which is one of the bigger farm management platforms now. So I, he brought me kicking and screaming into the ag industry industry to start off with. Very similar to what Pete was sharing, I really quickly fell in love with the people and also the industry in general really having my mind blown when it comes to how the food we eat every day is grown. You know, it's one of the few products in the world that everyone needs every day. Uh, so really in terms of, I like adding value in the world. And I feel like I felt like being able to add value to farmers in their everyday life w- was a big deal. So I love building AgWorld out. I was the product founder there and uh, 
really enjoyed solving problems on how to help capture information in the field, manage what's happening in the field better. But one of the things I noticed overwhelmingly was that farmers really struggled when it came to uh, managing the financial side of things. So, you know, running bookkeeping, accounting, keeping up-to-date financial information, having at their fingertips uh, profit and loss type information. So started to get really passionate about, hey, we, we need to solve some things on the back office, make it a lot more achievable for farms of any scale to be able to have great financial information real time throughout the year. So that was the genesis of robot accounts. Went off to start robot accounts and partnered with Pinion at the time. And we've really spun robot accounts out as a, as a back office automation and enablement platform alongside what, what we're doing on the Pinion side. Awesome. Well, guys, let's set the table a little bit and talk more about Pinion in general. Can you give us an overview of Pinion and all the different business units, departments, services that you offer and kind of how that ties into each of your roles? Yeah, I'll, I'll start and give a little bit of the, the background of, of Pinion. So uh, Pinion is, is roughly a 90-year-old accounting and consulting firm, really predominantly focused on production agriculture and essentially the food and ag supply chain. We certainly have lots of customers in, in other industries, uh, but the, the majority of our, our sort of primary focus, again, is geared towards that food and ag supply chain. Many of, of, of the listeners will probably remember some of our sort of predecessor firms that have come together to, to create Pinion. Companies like Kennedy & Co. in the Midwest, Matson & Isom in, in California, and then most recently a firm called Anderson's & Moulin out of uh, Montana. And again, all our, our sort of founding firms, if you will, that that had that same real interest and focus on on agriculture, on on food production, and, and kind of rural America in in general. So fast forward today to where where Pinion stands. What we're really trying to do is is be not only a national, but eventually then a global food and ag uh, consulting and and then uh, accounting firm, at least here in the United States. The accounting pieces will be a domestic focused operation. But trying to surround growers with the resources that they need to get where they're trying to go. And that looks different for, for each. But for, for some, that's going to need core services like tax and financial statements and, and lots of the things that we've done for decades. For other customers, that's things like grain marketing or perhaps uh, succession and estate planning types of topics. The one, and we'll talk more about this a little bit later today, but uh, the one we're really excited about at the moment as well is our sustainability and ESG consulting business. Lots of things going on there that are very relevant for for, uh, growers across the the, the country. We've really tried to create a discipline to cover the vast majority of the needs that, that farms and ranches will have and are always trying to look towards what's next. In, in five years, what are going to be those topics that are that are, are, are sitting on the doorsteps of, of those farms and ranches, and how can we be armed to help those clients get there? And, and a big part of our push towards having this kind of predominant focus in food and ag is we really feel like to, to bring value, you've got to have a critical mass of people with real industry focus and expertise, people that are farming in their own lives and then coming to work and sharing that with the customers that they interact with. The ability to go learn from one customer or or learn from a different region how they're doing something and bring that to other customers. So we think part of our value proposition is, again, having this this critical depth within the industry and lots of resources that we can bring to help our customers uh, find success, whatever that success may look like for them. Yeah, so on the robot account side, part of the genesis of this was my background in ag world coming together with Pinion really finding an accounting firm who really seemed to understand the need not just to solve this problem, but the need to use technology to make it more accessible, more affordable, get better outcomes, manage data better, link what's happening in the field to the financial side. So I started out partnering with Pinion and we've really spun robot accounts out of that. And really it's it's born, as I said, from this this passion to solve that that back office data problem. So not just get data organized well, but help streamline the whole thing from accounts payable, bill pay, accounts receivable, closing the books regularly, everything that comes with it. 
No, I just I find this super interesting. I mean, I think Pinion is has been this leader in the space, um, an established leader in the space that has covered you know across 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 the nation, like you mentioned, Peter. But you guys have kind of always been really trying to push the boundaries of innovation, um, and I think that that's really reflected in the relationship with robot accounts. Um, so Matt, I want, I want to dig in on a little bit more about robot accounts. Tell us a little bit more about what you guys are building and how, how this really is providing impact to, to the farm. Sure. Primarily, robot accounts is a data processing platform for the back office. So when we say back office, we're really talking about everything that happens on the financial and the, and the office side. So that would include bookkeeping, um, some aspects of what most farmers would be using a traditional sort of accountant or bookkeeper in town for. So we're processing, you know, all uh, business documents come through robot accounts. We process bills and invoices, customer bills, supplier bills, and we streamline the process of getting those bills paid and allocating them properly. So that includes extracting everything off the bill. Is there an inventory purchase? Uh, is it water? Is it fuel? Make sure, making sure it gets categorized properly. But also, really critically, we see it as a um, center point for all of the other points of data on the farm, as Peter talked about earlier. So especially if, if we're making inventory, variable costs, right? So inventory purchases, where is that inventory going? How can we make sure that all of the costs are being not just allocated correctly to the right field or the right crop, but also... Are we make can, can we make sure that what's happening in the field we're reconciling that with the financial financial statement? So what we find is having a central platform like that that's focused on reconciling all the other points of data, payroll data from a plat- platform like AgWorld or uh, Granular or something. Pulling that information in and reconciling it means that we're really helping farmers also catch operational issues like you know, did you, did you really receive that product that you paid for and did it get allocated properly? And so, so we find it's also a really good operational tool just to make sure that that back office is a center point and you don't have to have a large team to make sure everything is being managed meticulously in the back office. Most importantly, though, I think is the way we do it and because of the scale of the automation and the standardization of the way we do it, farmers have real-time reporting and dashboards that they've never had before showing uh, things like real-time income statement, balance sheets, market value balance sheets, uh, inventory reports, management reports, things like current ratios, machinery debt ratios, things that can really change the game when you're in the middle of the season and everything's busy as a, as a farm manager, farm owner, to be able to make those big decisions, have the right information at your fingertips. Thanks for that overview, Matt. Peter, maybe you can fill us in on kind of how all these businesses and departments work together under Pinion. There's a lot of different services with the financial tools, the accounting tools, the farm management tools. How do these all come together under Pinion IO? Yeah, ha- happy to do so. So, so Pinion IO or Pinion Integrated Office, uh, something we've been working on for for a number of years now. And, and as a firm, we for a long time have been trying to get better information into the hands of our growers. And and as I think by now you're starting to sort of hear, the challenge has been about good information in the office and, and standardized data to work with. And we were really fortunate to come across Matt a few years ago, who who really had the vision for the need to re-engineer the way a farm office works to get all of these systems to talk to each other. And it just really resonated with us as an organization of this is how we're going to get that data set. This is how we're going to get that grower the information that they're seeking way faster than we're going to get it anywhere else. So as the as the foundation is kind of the platform for Pinion Integrate Office is the, the robot accounts set of tools. And that really provides that that data standardization that we need to do a lot of the common kind of accounting firm things or or even just accounting processes and procedures that we've been doing for decades. So if you think about Pinion as the place where we bring the kind of controller level, how do we get the books closed? How do we act as a consultant to that operation of accounting issues that they face and then use all of that robot accounts uh, uh, sort of engine and, and tools to create a lot of the more data entry and the, the task type of work that happens in, in an office. And what that gives us then as an organization, as a, as a consulting firm, is the ability to say, we have this tremendous set of information at our fingertips. 
because of, of the standardization in robot accounts, the standard processes and procedures, and then finally layering on a controller to really close those books out and give you good cash and accrual information about what's happening. And then all of our other consulting disciplines can then bolt on top of that, depending on what that grower's needs are. So if you are a user of our grain uh, marketing and, and risk management team, having really good cost of production data at your fingertips allows you to make really different decisions on how you're going to market your grain, how you're going to utilize options, what your risks you may be willing to take or not willing to take. So we believe this Pinion Integrated Office product really allows all of our other consulting disciplines to sort of step up their game in, in terms of the reporting that they can provide. I alluded to this earlier, but the, the one I'm really excited about right now is we're, we're increasingly seeing sustainability, ESGs, traceability, you guys pick the word that we want to use today, as, as something that everybody is at least considering or talking about. And it's still somewhat, I think, early stage for, for a lot of, of farms to think about what that means back to the farm gate. But we are seeing more and more opportunities for farms that have really good data sets and can provide really accurate accounting of what happened on that farm or what didn't happen on that farm to the rest of the participants in the supply chain. And we feel like the robot accounts platform with that, that sort of pinion IO overlay of the controller and closed books starts to provide you with reporting opportunities and verification opportunities that will really give growers a competitive advantage in the supply chain going forward. So I get pretty excited about all the different ways. Once we have a good set of information to work with on a farm, we can help them think about leveraging that. Matt, I want to, I want to dig in on all of this AI buzz, right? Like you got, you guys were talking about AI a few years ago with robot accounts and what that could mean for, for this back office management but how how are you guys thinking about all of the the recent developments with OpenAI and what they're what they've launched with ChatGPT? How you're thinking about how that impacts what you're doing with with robot accounts? You know, I've been watching AI closely for my whole career in computer science. So I graduated university back in '98 down in Australia, and so I'm probably a little bit less surprised than 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 a lot of people at you know the the current developments. I have a bit of a contrarian take on AI. I, I don't I don't think, you know, AI is not going to be sentient. It's not going to take over the world anytime soon. I think there's things that my general philosophy on the whole thing is that there's still going to be things that humans are needed for and that, that we absolutely have to be good at. And those are things like being creative, solving problems, um, you know, big picture decision making and so on. So right from the start, I built robot accounts with a couple of things in mind. One is to get to the scale of data processing, categorization, and integration that we need to, there was going to be two things we needed from day one. That is really good standardization. One thing people don't realize about, about AI is it's a really critical piece of it is what we call data labeling. <clears throat> and in the context of ag finances, that looks like, hey, we, we can't just keep running your accounting system so you type whatever you want in and we expect to get really good automation out of it. So we've built automation in from and standardization into everything we do from day one, including AI based automation. So where we use AI is things like document extraction, um, coding bills, automatically identifying items that are being purchased. So we built AI right, right into it. And what that meant was a lot bigger build up front, especially around how do we standardize the process, standardize the chart of accounts, standardize the kind of items that people are purchasing across the industry and think about how to process that so that we can we can utilize the power of AI, which is which is basically what AI is, is basically really advanced version of copying what humans do. Watch what humans do a lot of and then copy that and get really good at doing it like they do it. So, you know, we see things like now it's writing songs that happen to sound a lot like Ed Sheeran or whatever else, right? Because it's it's looking at what's popular and I'm going to copy that. So we have to think as an industry about all of the things we do that are the kinds of things that can be easily copied. And, you know, that's going to be in the back office. There's a lot of those things. So the exciting thing is I think we can really cut the guts out of a lot of the menial work in the back office. But we're going to have to, as a part of that, is, is adopting standards and being able to consolidate around those standards. 
as far as chat GPT goes and some of the more really exciting kind of that pattern matching can get really, really advanced and it starts, you know, as we're seeing in chat GPT. So I don't, that will start to affect ag more and more, but I think really what we focus on is the automation side of things in the back office. It'll be a while before we can send a, uh, one of whatever Tesla's auto bot things, humanoids out to the field to do your pruning for you and whatever else. But I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Automatic machines, I think, is a big opportunity in the field, and it, it's very realistic. But the thing that I always encourage people to think about is, hey, is, is what I'm doing really adding value in the area of creativity, in the area of problem solving, big picture thinking? If not, then start thinking about, hey, maybe I need to find someone to help me automate this this piece out of my daily life. Yeah, as a user, it's been exciting to see the evolution of both robot accounts and Pinion over the years. We've had a relationship with Pinion for four years and interesting to see like year over year how new products and services are introduced. We originally established the relationship on the the CPA side, really doing our accounting work. And Mm -hmm. every year it feels like we've layered on a new service that's been beneficial to our organization to really execute a fully remote back end, which has been really interesting what you talked about at the start, Peter. Well, guys, we're going to take a, a step back and just talk about the industry as a whole, um, run through a few questions here. Maybe, maybe Peter, we'll start with you. What's your ag hot take? My, my hot take is, is back to uh, the, the sustainability, traceability, sort of supply chain opportunities that I think are, are coming fairly rapidly. You know, a lot of, a lot of my colleagues want to say that this is just going to be the cost of doing business, that there won't necessarily be premiums paid for being able to verify and trace things. I, I still believe that there, there will be premiums. I, I believe for, for those operations that are willing to invest in, in having reporting packages that can really show what they did, how they did it, what they didn't do, and be able to validate that, I think there's going to be uh, opportunities in the supply chain. Those could be direct supply contracts with with food manufacturers, for example. They can come in a lot of ways, shapes, and forms. Um, but I just think there's so much interest throughout the supply chain right now about what's happening back to the farms. And there's a lot of pressure on the, the food companies, the, the retailers, uh, to, to get information about what's happening on the farms. And I absolutely believe it's going to create an opportunity for, for growers in the future. Matt, what's something you've changed your mind about in the past few years? Really, this goes back to the birth of robot accounts. Where it really started for me was on the ag world side, pretty much every farmer. So, you know, at ag world, we, we were uh, blessed to expand globally. You know, we were in a lot of different countries. So I, I've been on farms all over the world. And the one thing that I heard from all of them was, hey, this is great that we're doing this in the field, but we need to connect it with our financials. And I naively went into that thinking, oh, cool, you know, QuickBooks Online, we've got, we, we've got accounting systems in the cloud now, we should be able to just integrate. And what I've changed my mind on is, is realizing that we actually need a total overhaul of, of ag finance, you know, ag accounting, thinking about how farmers, helping farmers think about their financials, uh, especially here in the US, I would say there's a lot more regulation in a lot of the other countries that kind of force financial reporting standards onto farmers. Here, where we can get away with running it on a cash basis and not really tying anything out until tax time, um, and then layering in extra complexity like subsidies and so on, I, I've really sort of changed my mind on feeling like it's it's a bigger problem than I thought. We need to put more energy into it, more effort into solving it, and turn focus to say, "Hey, that's I want to help solve this." Peter, you've been in the industry for, for quite a while now. What's a common mistake that you see people in the field make in? I, I think um, too many operators focus on trying to be the, the best agronomist themselves, the best planter themselves, the best at buying products themselves. And I really think that the farm leaders of the future are going to be much more of really strong managers who can drive home the processes and the, the systems and the steps that are going to need to happen along the way to execute on a lot of these things. I, I really think that the, the farm CEO of the future is not going to be a subject matter expert at a lot of the common on-farm 
practices that need to occur or tasks that need to occur, decisions that need to get made. I think they're going to be really good at managing a team of people and ensuring that every time it happens this way and we follow those steps to a T. You know, Matt, Matt's got a long background in these, these farm management systems, for example, and the key to that is making sure that every time that operator pulls up at a field to spray or to do whatever the task is, that they do the steps that need to be done in order for that information to come in. And I see too many farm operators today not willing to challenge the way it's been done in the past and, and instead just say, my, my team won't do that. It's too big of a step for them to make. And I think the farm operators of the future really have to say, this is, this is table stakes. This has to happen. We have to do this every time if we're going to get where we're trying to go. So more of a focus on leadership of the team than being able to make the day-to-day decisions on, on a farm. No, it's such a, such a good answer. And I, I totally agree with you. It's about being able to zoom out, see all the operations and strategize about, hey, is this something that we need to delegate, outsource or automate, right? And being able to see that, see that whole picture, I think is great. Well, guys, this has been a ton of fun. What's saving your life right now? Maybe Matt, we'll start with you. Post COVID, I feel like COVID, I was able to convince myself I wasn't that busy because so many things stopped in life. Now everything's started up again. I actually, I have six kids and they're all back into activities. They're all, you know, they're getting to the age where they're all doing activities. So, you know, for me, it's the exercise of saying no to things in life. I'm, I'm saying no to so many things in life and business right now. And it's, it's, it's super freeing getting, getting good at it, managing it well. And actually, you know, I'm one of those people that probably took way too much on, but being forced into it since COVID came out and I got really busy again, I've just been enjoying learning that art again of, of saying no to the right things. Cause that's the only way you can say yes to the right things. I, I think for, for me, it's been a, a small change that I've made in the last year of, uh, I no longer end my day looking at any emails and I no longer start my day looking at any emails. It, it's made a real shift to, to not start the day off with, what are the, the problems that came up last night or the first thing fire that came out this morning and being able to wake up with a clear head, get sort of the, the day started and then get into that stuff. And then similarly, not leaving the, the, the last thing of the day to look through the, the last problems that have come up that now I'm going to stew at all, all night long. So I think that's been a real change for me. Well, guys, this has been a ton of fun as we wrap up. How can our listeners get in touch and connect with you? I think probably the easiest way is, is to, to visit the, the Pinion website, um, pinionglobal.com. It's got a ton of resources on it. Talk a lot about all of our different services. There's a lot about Pinion Integrated Office and, and some, some robot accounts information on there as well. So I think starting there would be a great place. Yeah, robot accounts, we're coming out of sort of stealth mode and be doing some big launches here soon. So probably watch this space. Well, as Peter said, that's a great place to start. But watch this space on the robot accounts front. So, Ty, what do you think of the conversation with Peter and Matt? Thanks for the question, Tim. I think what has been really cool recently, as we've been talking to more more people on the podcast, is you know when we first started the podcast, it was it was almost exclusively startup founders, right? Ag tech startup founders was really a big piece of it. And what I've been really interested in lately is some of the existing players, right? And and how some of the existing players are evolving to technology and to sustainability. And I think Pinion is a great example of that. They have, you know, such reach within the the ag ecosystem. Um, and they've really leaned in to technology and sustainability. And I think it's proving super valuable for them to, to differentiate themselves, provide new products and services. You know, we talked to Nutrien recently, who's leaning into sustainability. And I think it's really important for, for some of these legacy companies for them to continue to innovate and evolve in order to survive, right? Because a lot of these startups, they, they are posing a challenge and risk to the existing players. So I think it's cool to talk to both sides. And I think Pinion's doing a great job of it with robot accounts and all of, all of their product offerings that are a support to farmers on the, on the Pinion side. Totally. Yeah. For us, it's really been a one-stop shop for all things remote back office. So we've really enjoyed the relationship and excited to see how they continue to grow and evolve over the coming years. 
Well, guys, hope you really enjoyed this interview. We'll be in touch soon with another good episode.